So this is the master file. This is the foundation for the entirety of the program. Uh, this file's main purpose is to house the two separate modes uh, while keeping them separate and exporting their outputs simultaneously. Um, so as you'll see, the output for the VGA is embedded within this definition of the other module, but the output for the seven segment display coming from the Blackjack game itself is actually in the module here. Um, so yeah, just walking through it, there's just a definition for both, both the files. And then this is all just display for the seven segment um, using an array of eight numbers here. And this is using a lot more application than uh, we initially used for numbers. So we can get letters for like ready, you lose, you win, et cetera. Um, so VGA top is the next module. VGA top is the module for the visual for the statistical analysis of the game. Um, so the initial thing that this does is uh, inherit from horizontal and vertical counter to generate the specific clocks needed to update the individual pixels on the screen. And then the rest of this is essentially just drawing shapes based on uh, individual pixel dimensions and the conditional declarations at the end here, which also assigns colors. So FFF is white, 999 is a little gray. Um, some of them are red and green lighter on down. Um, and then this is the complicated part. This section generates the random numbers from the Fibonacci LFSR and assigns an array of 300 to these continuous numbers and then plots them. So this is, this is plotting all the points. Um, and then we have the Fibonacci LFSR. In this module, 10 second timer, this is for the actual blackjack game. So this starts off with a lot of declarations and then inherits two different types of LFSRs. We only ended up using the second one. The first one was for mostly debugging purposes. Uh, and then if reset is hit, it actuates the central part of the program, which is creating the array of cards and setting the first values of the cards equal to the player's initial number, which is displayed. Um, and then otherwise, in this else block, it increments the card array with respect to the next card being drawn every 10 seconds. Um, and it sets the outputs accordingly. So these are the four, uh, the seven, eight, sorry, eight outputs that it pushes out to the master file uh, in here, which then gets pushed directly to the VGA. Okay, so for our past LFSR module, um, it basically used the flip-flop and Marxist to generate a random number, as you could see on line 35 and 36. And then our past LFSR was not quite successful since it generated a random number when there was a difference in the array of seats but the seeds were accidentally equal to each other. So there would be no difference between these seeds. As a result, we always got zero from the past LFSR module. And this will cause the total points displayed at VGA to equal threshold set by the user in the end. So a solution to that is um, the Fibonacci FSR. It is basically using XOR to generate numbers whenever the clock goes high and low. This one is more efficient and convenient to use. All right, so mode two depends heavily on the VGA. So the VGA functions using two separate modules, one for the horizontal counter and one for the vertical counter. Now the horizontal counter starts by incrementing a horizontal count value from zero up until 800. Once it hits 800, which is the width of the horizontal pixels on the screen, it resets to zero and then enables a vertical counter. This vertical counter then allows the vertical counter module to start counting owning vertically. This has a limit of 524, at which point it will also reset and go back to zero. This allows the overall VGA to move across the screen horizontally from left to right, and then move down the screen. 
So as Josh has, has mentioned in the VJ talk module, after this, we just kind of assign specific values for, for the horizontal value and the horizontal and the vertical value based on the position of the horizontal and vertical count counter, counter outputs. So using the, these outputs, we then just assign different colors to different pixels and allow that to create the image you will see on the screen. So here's our demo. If I press the reset button, we'll start our game. You can see a 10 second timer on the right and a current score on the left. And I could choose to hit or stand at the zero seconds. So I'm gonna choose to hit. Now you can see our score increments a little bit. And this time I'm gonna choose to stay. Cool. Yeah, so it stays yeah. and then it shows the computer's value was 18. So in this instance, the player lost. Um, and that's the basic demonstration of the game. Every time you hit reset, um, it generates a new game and you can set, whoops, every time you hit reset, Oh, okay. we're staying. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, so you hit reset and then it actually asks you if it's ready. And then you hit reset again and it gives you a new game. You set the seed with these digits here and this is your like stay lever. And then these digits control the VGA, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, so I'm gonna stay, so I'm at 13. I'm gonna let it run until I lose. Uh, so we can get a demonstration of what it looks like when the player loses. And we're at 23, so we've hit over 21. The computer's value was 20, so we lost. Um, and then these control the second mode of the VGA, which is up here. So currently, the I'll just set it all to zero. So we've got the starting value to be zero. So it's generating a random number between zero and nine, inclusively, because those are the possible values that the uh, computer could generate. And then as you increment the number, so it's binary, so as you increment the number, um, piecewise, it increments the values, and as they get closer and closer to 21, you can see that you can, well, so you can find the optimal strategy, essentially. So right now, if I set the value to, say, 16, that would seem like a good place to stand. It looks to be about 55% under 21 and 45% above 21, so that gives an indication that it's a little more, it's a little better to stand at 16 than um, well, really, then a lot of other values, because um, then if you go too high, obviously it demonstrates. Like if we stand at 19, there's a very there's a decent chance that you'll win because there's a good portion of the graph that's very close to 21 but not above. But there's also obviously a very good portion of the graph that's below t or above 21. Um, so you play, you can play around with this to sort of get the percentage points. And then, of course, if you stand at anything too small, there's no possibility to lose. But obviously, there's a huge gap between the ending and 21. Um, I'm trying to get the max score below yeah, 21. Yeah, so trying to get the max score below 21. So the maximum value I think you can get is 30 here. No, well, oh. so the this is so this is 12. So 12 is the largest you can go without ever losing, but still potentially winning. Um, so things like that. And then in the future, obviously, we'd want to have like a standard deviation and a mean. But you can estimate the mean as just being like the center line of the graph here. Um, and the standard deviation is, well, I don't know exactly how to calculate it from the graph, but I think it's 75% from the mean on both sides, roughly. So it gives you a good idea of what you're looking for. Um, and yeah, the number of runs are continually being generated left to right, and it's only displaying the first 300. And the values obviously go from 0 to 30. play it one more time. See right now the current score is 12. I'm going to choose a hit. Current score is 17. I'm going to choose a hit one more time. Then my score is 21. Computer got 18. So that's a win.